Hey, fellas, thanks for coming out. Um, excited about the opportunity. Want to first congratulate Kyle Manungai uh, for being named Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. He uh, certainly deserves it. He's had uh, so far a great start to the season and really represents, I think, what our football team's about. Works extremely hard, lives in the moment, chops the moment, and uh, is having it's paying off for him. So excited for him and, and for our team. Uh, great challenge, number two team in the country. Probably could be easily ranked number one. Uh, they're that good. And uh, there's absolutely no weaknesses in this team. When you look at what they have, their offensive line, uh, two-time reigning Joe Moore offensive line of the year. They have an experienced quarterback who can both run and throw accurately at deep, do all, all the things. He's a you know, future first rounder at quarterback. They have two running backs that are as good as anybody's in the country. A slew of receivers, tight ends. Flip it over to defense. Their defensive line is uh, maybe the best in the country. Big, physical, deep. Linebackers run and hit. Secondary covers well. Kicking game, they have specialists that are, are arguably the best in the nation. So definitely a, a tall order, uh, but uh, we need to make sure we take care of us. That's that's what we need to do. And uh, that's what we'll do in preparation. And then great opportunity to go out to uh, Ann Arbor and, and go play. So looking forward to it. Craig, it's just going back to Kyle Manungai, what have you seen from him the way he's kind of developed in the time that you've had him and, and you know what he's done to become a formidable Big Ten back? Yeah, he's worked incredibly hard, both his physical development in the strength and conditioning area, um, become a student of the game, you know, oftentimes running backs can get away just by being naturally talented guys, and he is naturally talented, but he's worked very hard to understand run schemes, understand pass protections, and most importantly, understand defenses. So I think he's uh, now what I would call a guy who's in that final quarter of his development here, you know, and those are the guys that we need. Uh, you mentioned Kyle being player of the week. Seems like there's some more eyeballs on your program after starting three and zero. Can you feel any extra excitement from your players, from the fans, going into this huge game? Um, you know, I know our players are excited about playing it. It's a, definitely a great test for us. Um, I think we're so kind of isolated in this building and in what we do, and uh, you know, I don't look at stuff, so I wouldn't know that. I don't see very many people other than our staff, our players, and my wife. So. Um, I can't tell you that. I'm probably the worst one in the world to ask about that. But I'm excited. Excited to have a great opportunity. Pretty tough the last five of the last six halves, two, two games in a row, 21 and 20 in the first half of last year. Why do you think that is? What has allowed you guys to have success? And what do you think is missing to get? Yeah, I don't know. If I knew what was missing, you know, I would have employed it and done it and hopefully won the game. But um, yeah, I think, you know, one thing about our guys, they work so hard and they're so focused that uh, given the opportunity, they're going to be ready to go. Will it be good enough? Heck, I don't know. But we're going to go give everything we got. Coach, um, you know, first road trip of the year, going to the big house, over 100,000 fans, very intimidating environment to play. And how do you, as a coach, sort of prepare your players the best that you can to face that kind of an environment? Well, I love, I love going on the road. I mean, especially the first time when you take your, you know, 74 guys you're allowed to bring and your staff, and it's just you, and you go on the road, and um, nothing like it. You know, when you when you come out of that tunnel and everybody's against you, and it's just your guys, that's a special feeling. One that I think every athlete that's done it appreciates it and enjoys it. Um, so I'm again great opportunity. Uh, Coach there many times. Uh, excited about the chance. Coach, to go off of that question, is there anything? Uh you know, prep-wise that the team does, obviously three home games, but now going on road game, is there anything different that the team does um, during practice and before the game? Yeah, we flip the speakers. So when we're home, the speakers are on the deep, toward, pointed towards the defensive field, because as you know, it's deafening out there on defense, on third down, you can't hear yourself think. Everything has to be hand signals and nonverbal communication. Well, now you flip the speakers and you put them on the offensive field, because when you're on the road, the noise um, is gonna hit you on offense. So there's some certain things you need to do, nonverbal communication, silent counts, those kind of things that uh, that will 
put into play, but we've worked on those in training camp and ready to do that. Greg, I wanted to ask you about two offensive linemen in particular. Uh, Taj White, redshirt freshman, stepped up and played significant snaps at right tackle in place of Needham, who was missing. And then Brian Felter's played a lot of snaps this year and hasn't played, didn't play much last year, but is playing a lot more this season. Yeah, I think those are all good guys. And the guy I would add would be Kamar Missouri. You know, between Kamar Missouri and Taj White, they did a really good job of ham and egging it and filling in for Ty Needham. Um, you know, I don't think you could say that we really noticed that that was a huge drop off. And sometimes, as I've told you guys before, it's not always a one for one fill in. So I thought they did a great job together. They kind of split the reps almost down the middle. Um, so I thought it was very good. Uh, Brian Felter has improved. And I think he does a nice job of mixing in there. Um, with Curtis Dunlap. And, um, you know, again, I'm not opposed to that. You know, and Coach Flaherty is right along lines with me, and so is Coach Sharaka, that if that's what gives us the best chance to win, if five guys gave us the best chance to win, then we'd only play five. But right now, we feel this is the best mix and gives us the best chance to win. So, yeah, uh, encouraged by all those guys, and hopefully they continue, you know, continue to get better and better. After the Northwestern game, you said something to the effect of there were some plays you guys didn't run on offense that could be useful down the road. I'm curious, did you use any of those plays in the last two games against Temple and Virginia Tech? And if not, is this game against Michigan, top five team, is that the kind of game where you can open up the play playbook, so to speak? Well, you know, I don't know if it's open it up or not. I mean, there's certain plays that you continue to invest in. If you don't run them, then you continue to invest in them again, and you build cumulative reps. Uh, you know, there's certain plays that you're going to run every week. And everybody knows it, and those are the plays that you hang your hat on. But then there's other plays that you practice that are more situational. And um, if you don't use them, that's great, because then you build more reps. You know, you put more equity into them. So uh, yeah, there's some things that are out there. But we are what we are. Like I said, we're, we're going out there. We're going to do what we do. Um, you always make game plan tweaks to fit who you're playing. But that's the way we roll. Uh, recruiting Flip Dixon from the portal, what stood out about him that made you know that he was the right fit for this program and was going to be a guy who could really help elevate the defense? Well, Joe knew him, obviously, from the time at Minnesota. So uh, when, when we found out that he was in the portal, that was an immediate guy that we wanted to go recruit and recruit hard. Um, and Joe recruited him out of high school, actually. So, you know, he knew him better than anybody. And uh, I say Joe, Coach Harasimiak. So um, he was 100% sure. And then we put every, every bit of effort we could into him. And he's such a great, you know, not only a real fine player, but a great person, great guy to have on the team. Way back in your first stint, there was a lot of excitement and, and great times leading up to huge games against Louisville comes to mind, obviously. How did you know your team was ready for a moment like that? And does it feel like that at all right now? Well, you don't really ever know. You know, coaches say, well, I knew we were, you know, Coach Bryant, who was one of the best to ever coach the game, said, well into his career, I, I can't tell you if my teams are ready. You know, we'll see. And, you know, if he couldn't and, and Coach Paterno and those guys couldn't, I, there's no reason I can. Um, it's human element. You never know. And you just go out and play it. But what you do know is how much you invested in the preparation and how much you invest all the way right through the game, not to it, but through it. You know, every meeting on the sideline, in between series, everything at halftime, all that stuff is critical to winning and losing. Um, exciting, you put yourself in position to play these games. Then you got to go play them, right? So you, you, you do invest a whole lot before, but then there's that, that three and a half, four hours where you got to go get it done. And that's, you know, are we ready to do that? I can't tell you that. Uh, I, I hope we are. Um, but if we're not, then we will be. We just got to keep working at it. Um, but I like this team. I like their mindset. Um, I like the leadership. Let's go play it. Coach, um, I know you talked in the opening press part of the press conference about Kyle Manungai and you know the start he's had. How do you feel about how the rest of the running back room is coming along as you move further along into the season? Very encouraged. Uh, great question. Very encouraged by the running back room. You know, you go right through it. Sam Brown is coming back from his surgery, and I think he's getting closer and closer to being in game shape. Um, you know, 
Deshaun Benjamin has already showed us that he is a Big Ten running back. He's done things at a level that uh, freshmen rarely do. Most importantly, take care of the football. Uh, he's, he's really, really uh, stout with that. Uh, Aaron Young is, is working his way back from an injury, so when he's ready to go, I think he'll give us some flexibility there in different situations. Um, and then Al Shadi Salam is, is, is also worked his way back from an, uh, an injury, and I think he is uh, ready to go and is, you know, it gives us real position flexibility. So I think those five guys are really a good group of running backs. Quick two part on Gavin. One, how, how have you seen? What, what, how do you think he's done as a passer through the first three games? Are you satisfied with the progress he's made in that respect? And going on the road, probably the biggest atmosphere he's going to play in so far. I don't think he played at Ohio State last year. Um, how do you feel like he'll be able to do in an environment like that? And can he continue that progress you know, on the road? Yeah, I think Gavin's improving by the day. Um, I thought he did a great job Saturday. You know, three games into the season, he's protected the football the way we've asked him. Um, he had a he had some bad luck Saturday. I mean, he had three drops and two route errors, two route busts. So you know, if you take those five and, and you know maybe you call four of them completions, that really changes the complexion. We didn't throw much. We didn't need to throw much. Um, we were running effectively, and that was the kind of game it was. Every game is different. You know, we could throw the ball 60 times this week. You never know uh, what it's going to take, but you do whatever it takes to win the game, or it gives you the best chance to win the game. But I'm pleased with his development. He continues to really prepare his tail off. And I think uh, you know his arrow, his nose is pointed up. Greg, um, looking back, you've, you've coached against Harbaugh in NFL, you've coached him at, against him at the college level. What kind of relationship, if any, do you have with him? I have a lot of respect for Jim. He's an excellent football coach, um, knows how to get the most out of his organization. I don't you know, have a close relationship. It's more professional, but uh, ultimate respect. Thank you, guys.